such a lot of scenes of smoking people. I mean, is necessary? Was it necessary for the film? Well, uh, Romy Schneider was a huge smoker. One of my big inspirations were the pictures of Robert Lebeck during okay. those three days, uh -huh. and in almost every photograph, even in bed, she's smoking. So uh, it's still a fiction. I made my own fiction about it. But when I worked on the part with Marie Boima, um, there's really a situation why she takes a cigarette at what time. I mean, the cigarette was like her sixth finger, finger. on the hand. It was just part in every kind of feeling of insecurity or of joy or of a, a difficult question, she'd grab a cigarette sometimes while the cigarette was still burning. Yes. It's kind of like Serge Gainsbourg. There's also not one picture without him smoking. <laughs> so even though it's totally un PC to have people smoking nowadays, we're talking about 1981 where everybody was smoking even in TV interviews. It was yes. just like a normality. She wasn't the only one, the only person, the only actress in the film no. who smoked. No. I mean, no. They were all smoking, pretty much. Okay, how should people deal with this stress? With stress? Stress, like Romy Schneider, you said that she wants to smoke when she mm, is in stress. You mean how should, what I think, how people yes. should uh, deal with yes. stress? I think they what should... What is the better way? Um, they should maybe um, just stop for a few moments and just breathe. Okay. It's your way to deal with stress? Yeah, I'm trying that. It's like a kind of a meditation. I mean, me and Marie yesterday when we were the co in the car before going to the premiere, yes. we did a three minute meditation where we just stopped and we just breathed for wow. three minutes. And um, actually the Berlinale guest person who was very stressed beforehand because it was like a meditation that was on my phone he, I could, I watch it, he started to do it too. And all of a sudden, after this three minute meditation, where it was just about being in the moment and breathing, the car was totally silent. And we just kept another silence for another six minutes. And afterwards he said, I'm just, I feel so different. Yes. So he, he as well, yeah. So that's what we do. Okay, there are a lot of di dialogues in the film. Mm -hmm. Where did they come from? Is it your personal experience or you uh, found them in an interview? Or? Yeah, the, the movie is about three days in Romy Schneider's life and her giving her last interview. Um, and um, so I, that was my inspiration, was the pictures of Robert Lebeck and the interview that Michael Jörg did for the Stern magazine. Mm -hmm. That was my inspiration and I spoke to Robert Lebeck. He died in 2014, unfortunately, but I, I, I met him a few times. And Michael Jörg, the journalist, I had a lot of times to meet him. Okay. And afterwards I had this and then I put it away and I found my own dialogues. Because wow. of course, in, in the situations that I have, I don't know what they said to each other when they were in the bar drinking, of course. They didn't remember after 35 years what they said. Of course, <laughs> in the interview, I took lots from the real interview. And I also made, I also wrote my own interview myself. Okay, so with your feelings, I mean. Yeah. yeah. Or, okay. Why have you decided to make the film black and white? Because I was so influenced by the pictures of Robert Lebeck that were okay. in black and white. Yes, I saw them. There's so many extremely strong and beautiful pictures. And uh, he also gave me all the roles. So I had pictures that nobody knew. I had about 580 pictures. Wow. And I, uh, I, I dwelled on them so much that they were so much part of my life that during this, this time of, of getting inspired to write the script, that when I started to write the script, I only saw black and white scenes. There is very often journalists in a frame. You, um, and does it mean that we see the story from their perspective? No, but he was, you know, uh, I have four characters, not just Rami Schneider. I have her best friend, 
that's there as well, the journalist and the photographer. Each character have their own perspective. We see each character alone and they all have their own development. Mm -hmm. It's not only Romy Schneider, they're all there because of Romy Schneider, the big star, but they all have their own development. It's also about friendship. How is it to be friend with a star when you're not at all from the show business? It's about love. It's about um, uh, the press and the star. So that's why they're in the image all the time, because they're part of this quartet. They're part, they're main characters okay. of the film, all these four. Romy Schneider is shown in the film, I would say like a weak woman who maybe searched for the man who said uh, who would say to her that she should quit from this uh, screen why did you choose to um, represent her like this uh, I don't I don't feel that she's a weak woman she's a she's a troubled woman who is who is very strong in the fact of wanting to live. She decides, though she's not allowed to drink, to go out to drink, to dance, to talk with young oh. teenagers, to inspire them. I don't find her a, a, a weak woman. She is broken and she does seem sometimes like a victim with this journalist, but at the end of the day, she turns the situation around and at the, at the end of the film, the journalist basically gives her the interview and tells her, uh, do with it what you like. I, I, I don't care. You do with it what you like. So at the end of the day, she she has everything in her arm, in, in her in her hands, doesn't she? Yes. But it's so different from the other films I saw on the Biennale. You know, they um, they try to make a woman so strong. Yeah. So well, there are. And that's wonderful. Yeah, strong women are wonderful, but. I think it's also important to tell stories about criminals or horrible women or modern Lady Macbeths and uh, broken women who try to get out of uh, the situation. At the end, um, the story ends with a Romy Schneider who even maybe for one afternoon has found some peace playing with her daughter and actually reading this interview um, changing a few little things and saying, yeah, this is me, print it. She yes. finishes quite strong and yes. quite with herself. And that's what interested me. Okay. And so, in the, at the end, as you said, she stays with her children. And if you would have such a choice in such a situation, what would you choose? Filming or family? Um, both. She'll choose both. She's only there with a child right now because of the broken foot. But what's important is to manage to balance both. You know, at the end of the day, she has no man to pay for the bills. She has to work and she wants to work, right? But how does one, and that's why it's a universal story, how does one, uh, as a modern working f woman, and also very much, she's like totally in the limelight. Yeah? She's like, how does one balance that? How does one still have a private life? How does one be able to be there for their children, be there as a, as, as a mother, as a woman, and still be there for the fans and still uh, make a, a, enough films to, to pay for the, for the bills? It's so difficult to be everything. That's our dilemma. And, when you've not learned it because you're a star since you're 14 years old, it makes it even more difficult yes. to live this normality.